Mad fans, this is Mad Money Shot sniffing out the Madden cheese as always. We got something a little bit different today. We're doing a defensive tip video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. Haven't done that in a while. Haven't done a tip video in some time. Um, and the reason I do more money play videos and tip videos is typically the money play videos perform a little bit better. But since Christmas came around, a lot of people are new to the game. A lot of people got it recently for Christmas, whatever. Uh, I thought it was a good time to release some tip videos because there's a lot of people out there that, you know, I've been getting some questions about it in the comment section. So if you guys want to see more tip videos, it's really important that you hit the like button or you let me know in the comment section. Even more importantly, let me know in the comment section what type of tip video you would like to see i think would be good for me would help me out if you guys wanted to see something in specifically uh let me know it really helps me um to, to figure out because you know if i don't have an issue with something it doesn't let me know that you guys don't have an issue with something so if you there's something you can't do let me know and i'll try to put my spin on it and help you guys out other than that uh i'm gonna go ahead and i'm going to uh, you know get right into this the first tip that i got for you is wait to see if you don't do this it's a major problem um, wait to see what your opponent picks wait till your opponent picks a play a lot of people don't do that um, i'm sure a lot of people do but at the same time a lot of people don't so wait till your opponent picks a play and basically match personnel now there is a rule to break that and that's basically if it's like third and 10 third and 15 it doesn't matter what your opponent picks at that point you know if it's fourth and 20 or something like that it doesn't matter what your opponent picks you're going to pick something like this you know something that has deep coverages because uh, they have to go deep but if it's within a manageable situation which is like first and ten second and seven third and five you really have to match personnel unless you have a pretty good idea what your opponent's going to do as far as tendencies and i'll get into that in a minute uh, but for now we're going to go ahead we're going to match personnel so i'm going to use the three four here it doesn't really matter so there we go. We matched personnel. This gives me the best opportunity to stop both run and pass. It gives me balance. Um, and that's really the point of it. Like I said, as far as tendencies go, if you're playing an opponent and they've been passing out of a two tight end set the entire game, well, then maybe you cheat to a nickel or something like that. You know what I mean? This game is really all about reading your opponent's tendencies. That's one of the most important things is reading the tendencies and playing the percentages. That's that's the two major the two biggest things about playing defense is what is your opponent's tendencies and what is the percentage to get what you want which is basically to get them off the field. So like I said, this right here, if it's this third and ten, I'm not coming out in a three four. I don't care what they come out in. The chance of them running for a first down on third and ten is not high. So by playing the percentages at that point, I want to be in a nickel or a dime or something like that. Uh, other than that, like I said. Uh, tendencies how do you read tendencies this is probably one of the most important things too uh, basically your opponent's tendencies can be easily uh, predicted based off of what they do on third down which is the critical down and what they do in uh, you know, fourth down too, but you're not going to get that as often. Not everybody goes for it on fourth down, but third and fourth down, critical downs. What do they do? What plays do they run? That is the play that they're going to run in the future. So if you get your opponent with third and 10, pay attention to that play because they're going to think that that play is their money play that they can go to every time. That's when they pull out their best play, just like you do when you run an offense. What do you do? You pull out your best play in a critical down. So pay attention to critical down plays because you're going to see them again, especially if they're successful. If your opponent runs a successful play they're going to bring it back again because it worked the first time so pay attention to that you're going to see those plays again other than that uh, i would say your your plays that you see at the start of each half give away what your opponent likes to do uh whether you, the easy way to figure out if your opponent is a run first or a pass first player uh the first play you know the half or the first play of their drive uh, if they run or they pass it's probably going to be a run heavy or a pass heavy draft or pass heavy um, you know, drive the entire time. So pay attention to the first play they run in drives, first play they run in halves, and critical situations. Those are the easiest ways to figure out your opponent's tendencies. Other than that, like I said, uh, you know, this playing the percentages. If if it's third and ten or something like that, that dictates your defense too. If it's fourth and twenty, that's going to dictate what your defense is. Um, so those are you know th that's really important too. So other than that, uh, I'm going to show you guys how to set up your defense. Now this if this is a run or a pass, 
I basically want to do, I don't really have to be a great run defender. A lot of people don't know how to set up a defense. Uh, my defense pretty much handles my running for me. I'm going to cover three, uh, which is important when it comes to stopping the run. Uh, but whether this guy's going to run inside or outside, I'm pretty much going to take care of that before the play even starts. And that's really just pinching and spreading the line. It's, just, it's that simple. You know what I mean? Run, run, run fits. You know what I mean? I don't even know how to do run fits this year because I don't really use them anyway. Typically, when I, one of the plays I run, this has this safety blitzing. <laughs> so I basically want I basically want to contain this outside edge. That's important. If you run a cover three, you have an extra man down the box. Uh, but basically, when it comes to stopping the run, it's as simple as doing that, pinching and spreading the line, that and what formation you're in, essentially. So here, like I said, I'm pretty much covered. If he runs up the middle here, I got three guys that are stuffing this, this center so well that the running back's probably going to run into their blockers and go nowhere. And then when it comes to the outside runs, you can't run backside because Kendrick's got it. If he runs to the other side, uh, this is the side that I really have to worry about. If I'm the user linebacker, and I typically would take this guy in this scenario. So that way I have this guy to fill a gap and help if it's a strong side. And then I basically follow and fill as well. So basically I can leave Kendrick's here by himself. And then I'm basically going to act like a user middle linebacker but i'm really going to be paying attention to where the ball is going i'm going to mirror where the ball is going and since this is a strong side run with extra blockers i want to make sure that i leave that guy alone i don't want to i don't want to take him and user this side because then if it is to the strong side it, it's we're weak over there so i'm going to leave him over there and i'm going to bring, bring the weak side middle linebacker over and try to try to get over there if that's where the ball goes so like i said inside runs taken care of all by itself the outside run needs a little bit of help but you always need somebody to maintain the outside shoulder of the furthest blocker and that's what bradham's job is but typically if they don't do that you, you'll have somebody a little bit lazier inside like say this is where they're at if you don't want them to be head on you want leverage if you're head on like this it's just one step for that tight end to get outside and keep you from from basically getting to the edge and then you're screwed and he's breaking off a big run you always need outside leverage to your outside blocker and that's the further outside the better you know what i mean you basically they don't have to make the play just as long as they get the outside shoulder of the furthest block and turn the play up that's a win for you uh, because basically that's where you come in you're gonna have to user these gaps sure um, and that might be something that maybe it's an obstacle you got to practice uh, but realistically i can stop the run just by setting up my defense properly. So that's how to stop the run. Now we'll go ahead and we're gonna set up how to stop the pass. So basically this is all about make, funneling the play to me in the center of the field. So Mabel is a play I use quite a bit because I can't cover the outside. Your job typically to be a good user middle linebacker is to cover the middle of the field. I mean, if you wanna cover with the linebacker or you wanna cover with the safety, a lot of times I'll cover with the uh, defensive end, but the bottom line is I gotta cover the middle of the field. That's where all the action is. That's where your user wants to go. Um, you can try to cover the outside of the field, but that really makes no sense because the center will get destroyed if you cover the outside of the field. You can't take one of these outside defenders. You can try them if you have a lot of middle zone coverages, you can leave that and try to cover outside. I mean, I'll move around quite a bit on my defense, but realistically, nine times out of 10, you wanna cover the middle of the field. And basically, a lot of people will try to then, if you're a good user, they'll try to exploit the outside coverages. Now, by that, you basically can solve that problem by by making your, your adjustables, making your uh, defensive calls to basically make sure that the outsides are always taken care of so that you can you know funnel the play towards you. You want the play to come to the middle. You want to make sure there's nothing else. I'm not suggesting this is how you run defense, by the way. I'm just showing you an example of how you could funnel the, the ball to the middle of the field. Uh, but you really want to make sure that your outsides are taken care of so they have to challenge you. And that's really how you're going to make the most user plays and the best plays. But like I said, once again, some people might struggle being a user, and that's something you got to work at. But this is how you want to run a defense. So hopefully when they run the ball, there won't be anything outside. They have to force it up the middle where you're at because you're supposed to be the best defender on your team. The computer will get beat all the time. Uh, realistically, unless you have really good defenders, a lot of times they'll give you gifts. But realistically, the, the best defender on your team should be you. So that's where you want the ball to go. You want the ball to come to me. Um, and that's, you know, that's, that's, that, that's how you want to set up a defense. So I don't know how I'm going to brand this video, um, but uh, these are just some really easy tips. So how you can, and like I said, I'm not suggesting to run the plate like this, but this is just a really good, um, you know, maybe a like I said, I, I, I'm going to go ahead and explain, like this would be a good defense too, <laughs> like a cover two with the outsides are relatively taken care of. 
Uh, but realistically, like I said, I'm not, I'm not telling you how to necessarily run a pass defense, but you definitely want to set up your adjustments so that the outside is where the heaviest coverages are and that you basically want the play to come to you. I guess that's the best way to put it. So, like I said, this is just some easy tips on how to uh, play better defense before the ball is even snapped. Um, if you guys want to see a video on how to play better defense after the ball is snapped or something like that, give me suggestions. I'm, I'm, I'm putting the question out to you guys. I have quite a few defensive tip videos already in my, uh, in my playlist. But if you guys have anything you guys want, let me know. Other than that, thanks for watching, man. Mice it out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.